Hey there. And this one we're going to take some of this ramshackle orc terrain from the Kill Team starter set. Take some of these cheap makeup brushes and your choice of silver paint. And we're going to put this terrain together quick and easy. Um, starting off with dry brushing this all over uh, with that silver paint. Admittedly, I should have probably put a little bit more silver paint on my dry brush palette there. And let the bloopers commence. So, sometimes blue tack, you can trust it to hold on to models. And then other times, it doesn't want to cooperate at all. So, yep, there it goes again. <laughs> so, at this point, uh, I'm just holding on to that. It's just silver paint. It'll wash off. It'll be fine. So once we get all this dry brushing all figured out, all done, uh, what you want to do here is just pick your, just pick out, say, like four brightly colored speed paints, contrast paints, transparent paints. Um, I've got Talisar Blue, Bad Moon Yellow, Ball Red, and um, Dark Angel Green. And at this point, basically, I'm just painting over the silver, kind of giving it of metallic backing and applying this in random places all over the model um, so these bits of this orc flyer just gonna grab that bad moon yellow give it a nice bright yellow pop of color um, later in the video we're gonna bring this tone way back down um, when we apply our, our weathering medium our weathering wash um, so it's not going to stay this bright. Alright, so we're going to switch from the yellow to this bright red color, and because the red ones go faster, we're going to paint the, the hood of what was some orc speeder, or speedster. Uh, we're going to paint it red, and like I said before, uh, where you're blocking these colors can really be random, uh, be as bright as you want it to be, be as dull as you want it to be. Um, you could have more than these four colors that I picked out. Uh, just uh, I do have some metallics that I'll bring in later. But just have fun with this part. Block in whatever you want to. Be as detailed or as messy as you want to be. Uh, because it's terrain. Uh, it's going to have the look of beat up. It's hopefully going to disappear in the background of your tabletop games. So, you know, it's a easy low stress way to just practice putting paint on the model to switch from the red to this bright blue color and it's like I said before we're just picking out different areas different sections of model things that make sense things that might not make sense who cares um, so painting up the, the fin of this 
flyer, uh, the bits on this flyer. Um, I've also got to pick out some other things because I felt like it needed more than just this thing painted blue. Uh, I think I pick out some tanks in here as well. Um, just to get a little bit more splash of color all over uh, this piece of terrain. So here, um, I know this green isn't the brightest of greens. Uh, I wanted something that wasn't black uh, for the power lines, these power cords that are connecting these light bulbs on this kit. Uh, so I wanted not black. So I got a dark green, this Dark Angels green contrast paint. Um, it's relatively dark, um, but... I just painted over what these uh, like electrical cords, uh, extension cords can be green, um, Christmas light cords are green, um, just to not have the cord them itself be silver. Here's kind of an overview of what we're at right now and then we're going to switch right over to uh, silver or metallics of different shades of colors. So I wanted to bring in, besides the silver, I wanted to bring in some copper tones, uh, kind of give it that old metal look. Um, I guess in my mind I always think of orcs as driving around and these uh, little shanty vehicles with um, metal from who knows where and from where who knows. Uh, I kind of like the orange or the copper color when doing these. We're going to grab a brighter color here. We're going to go with a rich gold. Uh, from Pro Krill. And again, we're just picking out some other details that I wanted to be a little bit brighter, um, or a little bit different color of metallic than the silver or the copper color. Uh, and I think I primarily focus on these little pieces of uh, teeth metal uh, that are all over the model. But like I said before, um, when it comes to this kind of ramshackle terrain, um, just pick out uh, pieces, um, whatever you think looks right to your eye. It really doesn't matter because um, it's going to be kind of background for your models to hop around, play around, take cover behind. So from there, I uh, grabbed this black brown um, paint because um, it's not, it's dark, but it's not black, perfectly black. I'm actually going to use this black brown again a little bit later. Uh, but this tire was driving me crazy that it was silver. So I'm just using that black brown to paint over any bits that are clearly not supposed to be metallic. So the rubber of the tire, not supposed to be metallic. So I painted over uh, with this black brown uh, to make it not shiny and make it really dark and used and old looking. I 
side note, it did take me a little bit longer than I expected because of those little studs that are in the tire. So painting around each one of those because I wanted to still maintain those as being silver. Uh, this took a little bit longer than I expected. All right, because the brown was just a little too brown, uh, I grabbed a black wash. Um, so your black wash of choice here uh, to tone down the brown of that uh, tire a bit more. Take a little bit more toll to the black side of the color. All right, so here's kind of the, the super quick part, the special um, secret of the video. Not necessarily a secret, but um, Pro Acryl came out with this thing they called Noosh, this uh, acrylic weathering medium. So what I'm doing here is I'm mixing one part of an acrylic paint of your choice. So I went with black brown to give it a nice grime look and then four parts of the weathering medium and just a, a little bit of water out of this dropper bottle and with this weathering medium mixed up and having a really old cheap brush um, like a size six I want to say I'm just applying this weathering medium all over the paint job that I just did so all those really bright, bold colors that were there are now going to have kind of this grimy, grungy look with this weathering medium. So I'm going to do one side and then the other side. So I've got these um, makeup sponges. They're like little wedge-shaped sponges. And after you let that weathering medium uh, sit a little bit on the model, you can basically take these sponges and wipe it back off as much or as little as you want to. And you'll notice that we're getting kind of a dirtier, grimier, used junkyard look uh, with that black-brown acrylic paint on top. Here's that blue tag not cooperating again. And I'm basically going to do the same to the other side. This weathering me medium has a nice uh, setup time, uh, so you can work with it uh, over a larger model surface, or you can work with smaller surfaces if you want to. Uh, but it's a great way to have acrylic paint that's water-based, easy to clean uh, with stuff you already have at home, uh, already cleaning the other paints with. So again, taking that makeup sponge and removing some of that excess um, paint. So here's where we're at at the moment. So I wanted to give uh, some spots on this a little bit more of a rusty look. So I went with that Burnt Sienna paint by Pro Acryl. Again, one to four mix of paint to this weathering medium and adding a little bit of water uh, to give it a little bit more flow. And after I get this mixed up, I'm gonna apply this a little bit differently. So instead of doing all over, uh, I'm kind of applying where I kind of feel like there would be rust streaks running down from, say, weather or rain um, hitting parts of metal to where they kind of rust and run down the parts. So it's got kind of a orangish color to it here. Um, so just making it look and appear a little bit more rusty. So like I said before, you can apply as much or as little as this weathering medium as you want to. Uh, but I was just trying to get some rust streaks 
uh, going on this uh, model. So this time with a makeup brush, I'm a little bit um, more careful with wiping it off. So I don't want to get rid of the streak so much. Um, and you can pull the, the sponge down as you do I remove some of it. Uh, so at this point, I'm going back to the silver paint. I've got a little sponge um, that was packing material out of a set of dry brushes I had. And I'm just dabbing it into that silver paint, trying to apply um, the silver to the edges of the metals uh, to give it a little bit more worn look around those edges. Uh, admittedly, I probably should have grabbed a little bit smaller um, sponge here, smaller piece of sponge, uh, so I could better focus um, the silver on the very hard edges, but um, personal preference. Um, so here I'm taking this bright neutral gray. Uh, there's a string of lights on this model. Uh, so I'm just applying this bright gray onto those light bulbs. Uh, so I have a uh, light color uh, to apply Kind of a whitish gray color to apply a brighter color to uh, to give the light bulbs a more light bulb appearance And then at this point, I went back to that uh, bright yellow that I used before, and I'm just painting this over that gray to give these light bulbs a yellowish, yellowish color. Uh, but if you want to make them Christmas light colors or whatever color you'd like, uh, it's up to you, your personal personal preference. And that about wraps this one up, guys. I appreciate you sticking with me to this point. Um, here's the final results. Hope you like this one. Hope it is helpful. And then please like, like, and subscribe. Thanks.